At home with the Gamecocks, we catch up with Jacksonville State cross country track and field coach Steve Ray. Uh, we'll visit with him here on this segment in this episode of At Home with the Gamecocks. He's actually talking to us from his home in Arkansas, as a matter of fact, a home there. He's back, uh, I guess, what, near your home place? Is that where you are right now? Yeah, we're, we're, we're relatively close. We're more center of the state now. My wife and I both grew up in March Tree, Arkansas, which is 30 miles north, what, northwest of Memphis. So, you know, Mark Tree, Arkansas. So, yeah, we're probably a good two hours from there. Okay. Gotcha. We're, no, we're, we're about an hour north of Little Rock, straight north. Right. Everything in the midst of the, the pandemic, uh, you, your family, everybody good at this point in time? Yeah. Yeah, my wife and I are loving it here. Unfortunately, we have my son and his wife with us. They're from New York, and they, they were happened to be visiting the week before they closed down New York. Uh, he, you know, he's an actor up in New York. She's a teacher. But, uh, hey, they came to visit us, and they haven't gone back. So, and they, they can't go back. So, right. yeah, it's fine, though. We love it. It's, they're having a good time. We're having a good time. So, good deal. Well, the, the news came out. Uh, I guess some <clears throat> may have known it. Uh, but uh, your tenure, you're retiring as, as the coach at Jacksonville State, track and field and cross country. Uh, what, 2005 was when you came in? That's correct. Uh, yeah. You'd been at Carthage University uh, for, what, 13 years, I think, prior to that. So, right. Uh, I know it's a bittersweet time. Uh, you didn't get to finish the year, but as you were telling us, you'll finish undefeated in the season for the first time ever. Only right? season ever. <laughs> Can't beat that, man. Man, that's the way to go out right there now. <laughs> I mean, I, the way I look at it, man, it's, uh, you know, it, no, it's, it's, it sucks, dude. That's all we can say. It, it, for everybody, man, I just, I was, you know, that gun, we'd sent, we'd sent a crew, our throwers went to uh, South Alabama. Right. Because, you know, they don't get to throw the javelin indoors during the indoor season. And they got their meat in and, I mean, that's it. We shut it down then. And, and I hate it for like Coach Case and Coach McGinnis, man. And, you know, that gun, man. I mean, it's, just, it's everybody, though. You know, Andreas and his tennis team. But, but I, you know, and we all, I feel horrible for our seniors, though. That's, that's the worst thing. But, you know, I, I guess the NCAA is going to do the right thing and give them their year back. And, but, you know, I got, I got a few girls that are in a position where they can get a really good paying job right now. Well, see when the job market comes back open or whatever, but they're ready to go. And it's a it, – it's a difficult situation uh, for them. Do I want to come back and do another year of track? Uh, you know, maybe work on an advanced degree or whatever, but it'll work out. It always will. The ones that maybe don't have the employment, didn't have anything lined up, do you think those seniors may come back and use that year? I, I suspect they will, to be honest. I, in fact, talking with Coach Boone, I don't think we're losing anybody. I think they're all going to come back. Okay. I mean, I, I really do. I mean, it, it, the good thing about the, the girls, these senior girls, they're all pretty daggum intelligent, and they, were, they can come back and work on advanced degrees. That, that's what they're – I know the two of the four that I've talked to said that's what they're going to do, start a master's program. Well, do you, do you feel shortchanged that you didn't get this spring season in in your last sure. go-round? Sure, sure, man. You better believe it, man. I already had – I had 32 officials lined up for a home meet, <laughs> and, you know, just weeks away. My birthday was April 3rd. My last home meet was going to be April the 4th, and, and all of a sudden, I'm calling everybody. Hey, forget it, dude. Call Heather, the timing company out of Atlanta, canceling that. And, and I, we had, I think we had 24 schools intending to come, man. You know, another big, wow. another big turnout for us. And not to get that in, it's just, it's, it's just a tough pill to swallow, man. I know uh, you went, uh, you're a ready from Henderson State, uh, ran there, I think, cross country, uh, spent some time in Arkansas coaching, and, and then uh, before you went to Carthage, you were at Auburn, and I guess one right. of the highlights of your career as a graduate assistant there, working with Mel Rosen and Harvey Glantz as well. Right, right. Yeah, Coach Rosen, uh, he had put a uh, an inquiry into like the NCAA News or whatever. He wanted, I was basically a gopher. And just go get this, go get that, do whatever. Because that was the year he became the uh, Americas, uh, uh, track coach Americas wow. at the university. Because Harvey was coming in because R- Coach Rosen was going to be the head Olympic coach in 92. Right. And I was there in 91. 
and through, through 92 and you know he would bring in the relay team carl lewis and and leroy burrell and all those guys and wow i mean it was like watching the olympic trials every day and it's like good grief man but I, I was fortunate to get the gig there was over 400 applicants and i ended up getting it and you know i'm married and have kids in arkansas i'm coaching in arkansas all the time and told my wife what do you think she goes once in a lifetime deal you got to go so it was like going off to war, man, leaving the family behind. <laughs> going down there, it's tough, man. But it all worked out well, you know. And, and uh, Coach Rosen and, and uh, Coach McDonald, Arkansas, you know, he's the winningest track coach in, in history, probably the winningest coach in history, 49 national titles. But those two guys have always been good friends. You know, I look up to them, but they sort of took me under their wing a little bit. And the time I spent in Arkansas, northwest Arkansas, I did a lot of work with, with Coach McDonald at, at at the University of Arkansas. And, uh, you know, they helped me get the cards at the job. I mean, wrote letters, this and that, whatever. And then, of course, uh, <clears throat> at the time when I got to Jacksonville, you know, they were, Auburn wouldn't let us in any meets and stuff in the past. But I would call Coach Rosen, Coach, man, come on, man, you gotta let us in. <laughs> you know, I said, well, the first year, it's just, oh, this is not so great. Maybe we should stay away. But, you know, it, it, it helped us get right. better. Man, I mean, the girls realize, like, hey, we got to step it up a notch or two if we're going to compete on this stage. So it worked out well. One highlight again, I would think, I know uh, the word had sort of gotten out that this was going to be it for you. Some mm -hmm. of your former players got to come back and, and see Did you, I think, in the spring. And I know that's that's got to make you feel real good. Oh, really. man, yeah. And they had they had a bunch of the, the track girls had a big thing planned for, uh, for April 4th. You know, they were going to come in. They all know my birthday the day before, so you know, come in a couple of days prior to that, and, and we go do some things, hang out, this and that. We had a great time in the fall, though, with cross country. I mean, mm -hmm. Lord of Mercy, Joe Spat Waru flew back from Kenya. You know, Ryan McKay flew down from Canada. George uh, George Kipagot, who's in the U.S. Army, he got he got a two week leave in the Army just to come down. I mean, and George or Jeff Rhodes. Um, Oh man, I, I think we had we counted up twelve people were there that off That's of my great. former teams, and it was great. You know, and most of them turned around and ran the next day in the, in the cross country, yeah, except uh, Ryan McKay didn't. Ryan <laughs> probably weighs three hundred pounds now, so he he, he said he, he left he left JSU and he said I haven't run a step since. <laughs> Well, that's one way to do it, I guess. But you yeah. mentioned some 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 terrific names there, and on top yeah. of that. As I was just doing some prep work talking to you, <laughs> academically, you had a lot of success with your teams academically and a lot of awards through the Ohio yeah, Valley Conference and, and cross country and track and field. Yeah. yeah, we did. I mean, we've been academic all American on the women's side. You've been cross country forever. I mean, I think we might have missed one, one year out of the 14. Uh, we barely missed then, but. You know, a lot of times there's there's years in there where we had the highest GP of any Division One school in the state of Alabama, and in the conference. And the one year that we, we went gangbusters in track and field, we were in the top 10 percent in the country. Got a letter from you know an acclamation from the NCAA office, uh, whoever the the uh, commissioner was at that time. And then our women's uh, see the track team that's year also they were 25th highest gpa in the united states all schools can wow. consider tied for, tied for number 25 so but you know having a mother who was a teacher my two sisters were teaching my wife's teaching my daughter's a teacher education you know and, and i taught a lot when i was at cartridge I, ta I taught legal issues in the classroom for for phys ed and stuff like that uh two or three other classes but i you know i'm i'm, I'm cool with the education that we just you know the ncaa manual Right. It, it, you, know, you can read through it. Things about that thick probably mentions the word. It never mentions the word athlete one time, but it mentions student, student athlete, athlete. 500,000 times, I guess. You know, just it's just there. Student athlete, student athlete. So we try to drill it in their head. You, look, let's have fun and run. Well, let's get a degree and make it really count for something. Well, you're at your place in Arkansas. It's on the river. I've seen pictures of it. I may come visit you at some point in time. You're more than welcome. And uh, I guess there's a lot of trout fishing ahead, right? Yeah, like it's, well, I spent two hours this morning out there. <laughs> Didn't have much luck, but I, it's, it's hit and miss out here. Uh, I'll probably, probably won't go back out there today. The, the place we're on, the position we're on the river, 
we're near a hydroelectric plant. It's well, it's 13 miles from here. And when they release it for to create more power and stuff, the the river rises, and then ah, you can still fish, but you 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 have to struggle to catch them at that point. So I just usually lock it up about 10, 30, 11 o'clock. Done. <laughs> So then you nap the rest of the day, right? <laughs> oh, I can nap. Yeah, I got plenty to do. Plenty to do, man. Got, it's a beautiful place. It's a beautiful area. We're down in a little plateau. Um, Sugarloaf Mountain is two miles that way. And then the ridge that runs around uh, Heber Springs. And it's, we're, in a, we're in sort of like a basin uh, where and there's a lake called Veers Ferry Lake. And that's what feeds the Little Red River that we're on. Uh, but it's, it's as the crow flies, it's about four miles from here. Driving there, it's about six and a half, seven miles. But uh, yeah, it's, it's a nice area, man. I mean, I'm, gotcha. my mother-in-law's, uh, we had a birthday party for her. My, uh, my wife's sister and her husband had a place over on the island and uh, her mother was here. So my, one of my brother-in-laws took me around. This, is, this was 15, 20 years ago. And uh, we drove across the Little Red River, and it was really early in the morning. The steam is rising off the river. I see all these guys standing around out there fly fishing and stuff. And, oh, boy. One of these days, I'd like to do that. Who knew? Exactly. 15, 15, 16 years later, I'm doing it. So, Well, Coach, first of all, thank you for what you've done, your service to Jacksonville State, and the oh, way yeah. uh, that you've led the program here across country in track and field. I want to wish you the best in retirement. Thanks for taking some time to visit with us today. Thanks, hey, Coach. You know, I uh, – when I got there, I had two goals in mind. One was to be the longest tenured head track coach at JSU, and two, to change the mindset of cross country and track. And I know I accomplished the first. I'm, I'm hoping I accomplished the second. So, Thank you, sir. Hey, Good to you talk bet. to you. I'll yes, come see you one of these days. Oh, yeah. You bet. <laughs>